right, so we've got up next for comedy, Kate Smirthwaite. She is a stand-up com comedian. It looks like some people already know who she is. Who knows who she is? Oh my gosh. This is going to be good. And she's also a political activist. She has appeared on more than 500 TV and radio shows, including This Morning, The Big Questions, Women's Hour, and The Moral Maze. In 2013, she won a Three Weeks Editor's Choice Award for her show at the Edinburgh Festival. I probably messed up Edinburgh there, right? Uh, <laughs> that's how the Americans say it. Uh, Kate is a writer for the BBC Three show, The Revolution Will Be Televised, and is a vice chair of Abortion Rights UK. So please, warm welcome for Kate Smirthwaite. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm just going to do a very short little set and, um, and just maybe sort of liven up the afternoon a little bit before you get back uh, to talking about serious stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of describe myself as lots of things. I quite often describe myself as a feminist comedian and, and people always, if you call yourself a feminist, as I'm sure lots of people in this room do, people always give you that reaction of sort of staring at you and going, well, I'm all in favour of equality, but I'm not really comfortable with that word. And I love that. It's like, that's what the word means. That's a bit like saying, I do like hardened milk, but could you not use the word cheese? <laughs> so that's just the meaning of the word. But I understand that these things do get distorted in the media, don't they? So if some people are uncomfortable uh, with the word feminist, that's fine. I'm actually happy to stop using it because I personally much prefer the term radical cunt-wielding patriarchy smasher. <laughs> so. And I even have some t-shirts on my website with that on if you... If you want to use it. I, it, it was lovely to listen to Anthony Grading was talking about faith schools, of course, and um, I actually was asked to perform at an event uh, protesting uh, the G8 when they were in Belfast, and so I flew out to Belfast Airport, and there were police everywhere um, because of the G8, and, um, and, and earlier that week, David Cameron was being flown over. Earlier that week, Cameron gave a speech in which he said uh, that he thought that faith schools would improve community cohesion, and I just really wanted to have him to have the balls to give that speech in Northern Ireland. Um, where it wouldn't work quite so well. Uh, when I got here, actually, security was very tight. I don't know if you went through this, but, um, but I, I was kind of checked a few times before they let me in, and, um, and it all seemed a bit serious and, and somber, and then I realised what was happening is that there was a guy outside, a guy with a big beard, who's been trying to get into our conference all day um, to, let's say, participate, and... Um, and, uh, the, uh, the, you know, security was making it very clear to him uh, that, pe that there is just no place at this conference for hipsters. Um. <laughs> uh, but... Um, but the truth is that we're having this conference about religious harm and the harms of fundamentalist religion and, and the person in this place who is and has been, I mean there are many of us here who've suffered all sorts of indignities and, and been through all sorts of horrible experiences, but the person in this place who has suffered the most as a result of religious bigotry is actually that man outside with the beard. Do you know what I mean? Because at the end of this conference, we'll go back home. Uh, we might do some of the following things. Uh, play some music, dance, drink, shag. We might do all of those things. And this guy isn't. This guy is stuck in this. He doesn't have these freedoms because he's stuck in this world of hate and anger. And his day has been spent outside in the cold, shouting at our, our room, inside which we're having a laugh and quite a nice time, actually. So, um, by the way, I know I've used the C word early. I'm aware of that. Um, some people are uncomfortable uh, with that word. I, sh I should sort of mention that. I quite like the word, but I never use it as an insult. Um, a, lo a lot of political comedians actually say things like, David Cameron's a cunt, um, George Osborne's a cunt. Um, but I feel I don't like to use it in that context because I think that's an insult to cunts. Because I've got one, and not only is it awesome, <laughs> but despite my best efforts, it hasn't closed down any hospitals. <laughs> that is literally a joke about how few STDs I've had. Um, <laughs> it's strangely appropriate that it would get a clap. Um, <laughs> thank you. Good. 
But, uh, you know, but I, I, I mentioned that we do, a lot of us get put through the ringer for our views and for speaking out about our views. I'm sure I'm not the only, but I know I'm not the only person in this room uh, who receives hate mail, who receives death threats, uh, who has, uh, th- has their, uh, you know, internet filter ineffectively trying to keep out uh, some of the nasty things. I did a debate about abortion recently and, and, and the clip of it was online and underneath somebody wrote, having an abortion is like being raped by the devil. Right, which is which it, it, it's an amazing leap of, of jumping to a conclusion, but but it's also kind of brilliant in in its irony. In that, I think even if you are very strongly against abortion, you'd have to agree that if there's one time a woman ought to have one, <laughs> that would be it. Yes, there is a film about it, and it has a very nasty ending. Um, but I, but I do get a lot of death threats, and I know I'm not the only person here uh, who does. And, that, and I don't want to suggest they're not scary, because they are, and indeed people have died, and it's not something that we should be casual about. But if, like me, you receive them a lot, I don't know if you've noticed that after a while, you get really used to it. it you stop noticing in a way. I, I realised how blasé I've become about death threats when I turned to my boyfriend a couple of months ago and said, well, actually, my favourite death threat... You're not supposed to have a favourite. You're definitely not supposed to have a favourite, but I do, and this is it. Genuine YouTube message that I received, and it says this. I don't care what you say. I am going to rip the flesh from your bones. Now, I think that he does care what I say. (laughs) Because ripping flesh from bones is a very poor way of expressing apathy, isn't it? (laughs) Then he ramps it up a little bit, right? And he says, I have done this before. (laughs) I was responsible for Michael Jackson's death. Oh, that doctor will be so pleased. Um, (laughs) And the final sentence is quite sinister, actually. The final sentence is this. Not fucking around. You will die 4th December 2014. Right? Now, obviously, that's very much simplified my Christmas plans. Um, but it also raises quite an interesting question, doesn't it, about our need to be afraid, in a way. In that, have you, I mean, well, I think we get angry about things, don't we? we, we we're here to discuss things that, that we think should be changed in the world, injustices. And, but have you ever been so angry, you know, like so furious, so filled with rage, that you wanted to rip the flesh from someone's bones, but you're a bit busy till December? I refuse to be intimidated by anybody who doesn't know how to write a to-do list. Um, (laughs) And uh, sadly, my to-do list now includes the following thing. Go and get a train to Manchester uh, so I can do a show in Manchester. And then, bizarrely, the BBC are driving me back to London so that tomorrow morning I can have a go at the Pope. Hooray! Um, uh, And they're not bringing him in, personally, I wish. Uh, They're bringing in some of his uh, fans, shall we say. Uh, And we're going to discuss him on uh, Sunday Morning Live tomorrow, apparently. Uh, I've, I've never been. Well, the, the last time I was supposed to go on Sunday Morning Live, they were having a discussion about uh, the documentary about Muhammad and whether or not um, he should have been. Sh- they should have shown any images of Muhammad. Sorry, I, I know some people say the Prophet Muhammad, but I think that if you believe you can see the future, you have a mental illness, and I think it's very rude to refer to anybody by the name of their mental illness. <laughs> you know, like if you came in and I was like, "Oh, hey, it's bipolar Janet," Janet it would be awful, wouldn't it? Um, so I won't do that. Um, but yeah, they, they suddenly ran out of time and they, wouldn't, uh, they, they didn't get to me because um, they were supposed to be webcamming me from home. But one guy said they ran out of time. One guy said there was a technical problem. One guy said somebody else overran. Um, I think what we can conclude happened is that a producer said, seriously, you're going to go live to Kate Smurthway on a webcam and ask whether images of Mohammed should be sewn on British television. Does anybody not think she'll ping into webcam view in a turban and a beard going, what? Um, <laughs> and I totally was going to do that. So, um, and so, I'm, so I, But the good news is that the person who did manage to get an image of Mohammed uh, on the telly is right here. So well done, uh, Chris. Congratulations to you. Um, 
Although I have to say, if you're not allowed to show any images of him, I've got no idea how we know that that's what he looks like. Um, <laughs> seems a little bit circular to me. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I have to run off and get this train. It's been a real joy, and thank you so much for being a part of this conference. There's so many uh, important things happening here, and it's fantastic that there's such enthusiasm and such brilliant people here. I've got this, as a comedian, my other job, uh, actually, in a weird sort of way, is whenever I see something uh, that I think is great in the shops that I want to share with people, I have to go and buy it. And um, I found a book a few days ago uh, in a little bookshop near me, and, um, and I knew that I had to buy it. I wasn't quite sure when I was going to need it, but I think I'm going to go outside and give it to the guy with the beard in a minute. Um, I don't know if you've read this, but it, it, it is available uh, in my local Christian bookshop in Dalston, and uh, it's this beautiful book called God Wants You to Enjoy Your Genitals. <laughs> so do watch out for that. Enjoy your conference. Thank you so much for having me. Cheerio.